Bob, thanks so much for being with us today and for helping us kick off this important webinar. I'll pass the floor to you. Thanks, Dina. Can you hear me okay? Just great. That's great. Hi, everybody. Bob Mulderig, and really happy to be with you today for this very, very important webinar. You know, as we were preparing for the webinar, it occurred to me, and I know, let me just stop and say, I know I'm preaching to the proverbial choir on this, but, you know, here we are having a webinar that is dependent on each one of us having internet connectivity. And if that doesn't speak to how we have all come to realize how vitally important internet connectivity is for everyone in the country, nothing else would, right? We can't be here to learn about how important internet connectivity is without having internet connectivity itself. So I'm really happy to um, kick off this, this session. I won't talk long because you have important panelists to hear from. Um, but I did want to just, you know, welcome you, thank you for being here, and talk about how important it is for us to continue this, this good work. Um, earlier this year, uh, HUD released some notices that have to deal, that dealt with how public housing capital funds and public housing operating funds can be used to support activities related to broadband in public housing communities around the nation. And that's exactly what this session is. In case you had any question from the PIH notices that were released, the staff who are assembled today are going to go through the, the details of those items so that it's absolutely clear and you have all the guidance and all the information you need to be able to ascertain which and when you can use public housing capital and operating funds to facilitate broadband in public housing communities. So I think it's going to be a great session. Um, as I said, I'm going to move on really quickly because I want you to be able to hear from the, uh, the experts in this and have plenty of time to ask questions at the end of their panel. But I do want to thank you. I want to thank all the Connect Home USA sites. I want to thank the whole PHA community for the incredible work you're doing. Over the past year, we have never, we've experienced this challenge like we never could have imagined. And they've been in so many different areas, but certainly this is one of them. But for everything you've done, not only in terms of this particular subject matter, but everything you've done to keep our residents safe and well, I know all of us at HUD are eternally grateful. So thanks very much, and I'll send it back to you, Dina. Thanks. Thank you so much, Bob. Really appreciate those great remarks, uh, welcoming remarks. So with that, I'd now like to introduce our speakers. And as Bob said, um, they are experts, and we're very lucky to have them. Um, they will help us understand the ins and outs of how these funds can be used to support your work in digital inclusion. So from the Capital Fund today, we have Chris Granger. Chris is a Housing Capital Improvement Specialist and has worked for HUD since 2009. During his tenure with HUD, Chris has partnered with numerous PHAs in their successful implementation of capital fund grants. Chris is a subject matter expert on the Capital Fund Financing Program, the Emergency Disaster Capital Fund Grants, and Lead-Based Paint, lead -based paint sorry, Capital Fund Grants. We are also going to hear from Leandria Campbell, who is also a Housing Capital Improvement Specialist and has worked with the Capital Programs Division since 2002. She was one of the lead writers on both the Capital Fund Rule and the Capital Fund Program Guidebook. She has conducted various Capital Fund Guidebook trainings for PHAs throughout the country, and she is a subject matter expert on general Capital Fund regulatory requirements the 9J statutory requirements for obligation and expenditure, expenditure of capital fund grants and housing related hazards capital fund grants. After we hear from the capital fund, we are honored to hear from Todd Thomas, who is the director of the Office of, Pro of Public Housing Programs, which oversees the operating fund. Todd has been very generous with the Connect Home USA program, participating in past webinars and even a regional convening. So thank you all for being with us today. And with that, I will turn it over to the Capital Fund team for their presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dina. All right, so. Generally, capital funds are used for modernization, development, or financing of public housing units. However, the statute and the regulations allow up to 10% of any annual capital fund formula grant 
to be used for something called management improvements. Uh, management improvements are non-capital activities that are needed to upgrade or improve the operation or management of a PHA's projects to promote energy conservation, sustain physical improvements at those projects, or to correct management deficiencies. Under management improvements, which is uh, budget line item 1408 and locks, PHAs may use capital funds for con connectivity activities, such as the establishment and initial operation of computer centers in and around public housing through a neighborhood networks initiative for the purpose of enhancing the self-sufficiency, employability, and economic self-reliance of public housing residents by providing them with on-site computer access and training resources. Uh, this is considered a management improvement because it does improve the operation of the PHA. Another uh, example of how PHAs can uh, use capital funds under management improvements to support connectivity is that they are allowed to um, install special directional antenna to extend wireless internet connectivity from the Housing Authority's management offices to several public housing properties enabling households within the reach of the wireless signal to achieve free connectivity. Uh, next slide. In addition to the management improvements that I just listed, capital funds can also be used to support building updates such as wiring to support broadband installation and Wi-Fi. Uh, capital funds can also be used to purchase and install equipment for individual units. And finally, capital funds can be used to facilitate programs to improve the empowerment or economic self-sufficiency of residents. Um, in the next slide, I'm going to go over uh, the establishment of neighborhood networks um, centers in a little bit more detail. And uh, after that, Chris will go into detail about how capital funds can be used uh, in individual units. Uh, so the, uh, the Act, Section 9 of the U.S. Housing Act, actually uh, allows capital funds to be used for the uh, initial operation of a neighborhood networks computer center or any kind of shared or common computer centers. Um, with the establishment of this under uh, management improvements, as I mentioned before, budget line item 1408, uh, PHAs can fund things like computers and computer equipment, uh, equipment upgrades. They can renovate the space needed for a computer center. Uh, they can fund uh, computer and internet connections and utilities. Um, they can fund digital, digital literacy training costs and other related training. Um, and they can fund staff salaries. Now, what's important uh, to pay attention to with these eligible items for the neighborhood network computer centers is that because they are management improvements, uh, capital funds can only fund them for the initial establishment. Uh, as after everything is set up and established, then they become ongoing operating fund costs. So you may no longer use your capital funds for that. Um, that's important, especially uh, for staff salary. Um, if you are hiring uh, somebody, a coordinator maybe, who is very familiar with all of the new equipment that you have just purchased um, and who's going to kind of coordinate uh, teaching all of your current staff how to use everything efficiently, then you can pay for that person's salary while they are teaching your staff how to do it. However, um, and this would have to be listed in your uh, management improvements plan, um, the amount of time that you're planning on having that staff person there for. Um, you can only fund their salary for a very specific uh, implementation period. After that, it becomes an operating fund cost. 
Next slide. And uh, now I am going to turn it over to Chris to talk about uh, connectivity eligible, capital fund connectivity eligible items and in individual units. Thanks, Leandria. Leandria discussed connectivity as a management improvement and how capital funds can support connectivity and some eligible activities. And we're lucky to have Leandria on this presentation because when it comes to capital funds, she wrote the book. And in her bio, you can see it. I mean, she literally wrote the guidebook. So we're lucky to have her. I am Chris Granger, and I am going to continue the discussion of eligible activities to talk about eligible cap fund activities for connectivity within individual public housing units. So these are within the ACC units that are public housing, and I'm happy to do it because this is such an important topic for this day and age. These are eligible capital hard costs. These are things like, <clears throat> excuse me, installation of broadband infrastructure and physically wiring the units for internet. Um, these are things like equipment like modems, routers, hotspots, satellites, receivers, antennas, uh, not the actual satellites, but the satellite receivers, of course. Um, and you'll, you'll notice a trend here. These are, these are one-time purchases of hard items like routers and modems, and these are um, physical upgrades to the units that include like wiring the units for broadband, things like that. So um, these are not ongoing expenses, right? And um, on the next slide, I'm gonna talk about the ineligible activities. And I think you'll notice a trend there that those are gonna be trending towards the ongoing expenses. So the ineligible cap fund costs are largely ongoing that are associated with ongoing operations. It's important to remember that these costs are specifically ineligible as capital expenses. So cap fund does not cover these operating costs. Cap fund does not cover the op ongoing operating costs of computer centers. Um, this includes ongoing internet fees, equipment subscriptions, salaries, routine maintenance. Uh, this also includes ongoing resident council computers. Um, these are ineligible under cap fund. However, on the next slide, I'm gonna talk about how capital funds can be used to cover operating fund activities. So capital funds have a flexibility that allows housing authorities to use a portion of their capital funds for operating fund expenses with field office approval. This has been historically limited to 20% for most PHAs. However, uh, recent appropriations language allows for housing authorities to increase this amount to 25%. Additionally, small, non-troubled PHAs may increase this to 100% with field office approval, and they must not have any significant capital needs to do this. To use capital funds for operating expenses, these funds must be identified and approved in the five-year action plan in EPIC. That's the Energy Performance Information System where we capture capital funds, five-year action plans, and annual statement budgets and performance and evaluation reports. These must be budgeted to budget line item BLI 1406 operations. So this means that an activity that is ineligible under the cap fund, but eligible under the operating fund can be carried out with cap funds provided that the housing authority has used the flexibility provided by capital fund BLI 1406 operations. This talk today is primarily focused on a subject of utilizing these funds for broadband activities However, if anybody has general questions about CAP Fund, the Capital Fund has a tremendous amount of resources available on our website, and CAP Fund staff is always available to answer questions. Now I'm going to turn things over to Todd and Tara to talk about Operating Fund. 
Thanks, Chris, um, and thanks, Leandria. Uh, and I, I want to um, you know, reiterate how much we appreciate all of uh, the folks participating today. And, and I just want to second Bob's uh, thanks to to PHAs, um, especially over the last you know 15 months as they um, you know addressed the pandemic and uh, really had a, a lot of patience with HUD as we worked through. Uh, guidance on you know, the CARES Act, which I'll talk about here briefly, but generally just just all the work that you all put in to try to support your families in, in really really challenging times. And that doesn't say anything about the the regular work that you guys do uh, day in and day out. So um, just really want to second the thanks that that folks have, have extended today. Um, I'm going to talk just briefly about um, the use of operating funds to support uh, connectivity in, in the public housing program. Um, so uh, PHAs, you know, uh, just the way they receive capital funds, receive an annual operating subsidy um, uh, described in that Section 9 of the U.S. Housing Act of 1937, um, specifically under 9E of that Act, um, PHAs can use this funding to pay for procedures and systems to maintain and ensure efficient management and operation of public housing units, providing adequate security for public housing residents, uh, other activities provide for the management and participation in the management and policy making of public housing uh, by public housing residents and the cost of uh, operating computer centers in the public housing program through, through the neighborhood ne networks initiative. Um, and I think that last one is, is, is where we're going to sort of go to the next slide and have a jumping off point about how housing authorities can use uh, operating funds for neighborhood networks. Um, so, uh, you know, while the neighborhood networks program um, is, is 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 somewhat old, I guess you know, going on 20, 26 years now, um, and uh, there really aren't that many uh, new neighborhood networks programs being uh, developed. There are a number of neighborhood network programs at PHAs that are continuing to be operated, um, and uh, under Section 90, specifically, housing authorities uh, can use operating funds for the ongoing. Uh, support of the neighborhood networks programs. Um, and so housing authorities can use uh, operating funds to, you know, pay for the operating costs of the neighborhood network program, to pay for internet service uh, and uh, replacement of, uh, uh, you know, laptops um, in order for, for residents who are uh, enhancing self-sufficiency, employability, economic self-reliance, um, is by, you know, through the provision of uh, on-site computer access and training resources. So, again, housing authorities can use their operating funds to pay for, you know, like I said, things like Wi-Fi, uh, replacement, uh, you know, replacement of units, replacement replacement of, um, you know, laptops and tablets, uh, you know, the, the, the operating costs, electricity, things like that related to that, uh, the provision of the neighborhood networks um, centers. So, next slide. Um, so, how else can housing authorities use operating funds to support uh, connectivity? Uh, so, um, one thing that we communicated in, in the guidance that Bob referenced um, and that we can provide a, a link to um, is uh, earlier this year, HUD communicated that housing authorities can use their operating funds to pay for internet service for residents um, in common areas and uh, directly in the unit. So uh, what, what does that mean? Uh, it means that um, a housing authority can, can pay to, to have some, you know, a particular individual unit uh, to have a broadband in that unit that's used uh, by the family at no cost to that family. Um, there's not a requirement that housing authorities provide uh, that internet service, but it is an eligible operating expense. Uh, of particular note, though, uh, this will not, if a housing authority chooses to use its operating funds for this purpose, it will not be eligible for additional operating subsidy from HUD. Um, and uh, so I've already kind of went through the, the neighborhood networks activities, but again, just sort of reiterating ongoing internet connection fees and utilities, computers and computer equipment, uh, staff salary for staffing of the neighborhood network center, um, and insurance for the buildings, uh, other activities related to operating the computers that are training programs, 
and then uh, network maintenance and security expenses. Um, so I already talked about the ability to use internet computer service for residential units and common areas. Um, and they can also pay for, uh, you know, maintenance is one of the, the general expenses of the operating funds and maintenance can include uh, maintenance for PHA purchase broadband equipment and wiring, uh, PHA purchase Wi-Fi, uh, network equipment, satellite and cellular receivers, and unit routers, hotspot and modems, um, and other sort of staff expenses. It, the money cannot be used for maintenance of, of tenant-owned equipment. Um, and uh, so, I want to sort of clarify also that none of the uh, expenses can be used to fund uh, entertainment services, so cannot be used to pay for, um, you know, uh, certain subscription services, cannot be used to pay for cable uh, television or phone services, um, and uh, I, I already mentioned that it can't, it won't increase eligibility for operating subsidy. Um, I also want to clarify that this is not a utility allowance. Um, housing authorities should not be providing a utility allowance for residents in the public housing program. Um, and uh, again, they're they're allowed to pay for out of their operating subsidy for internet costs, but may, may not reduce a family's rent um, uh, or, and will not be eligible for increased subsidy as a result of the decision to provide internet service for families. Um, and if there are uh, any uh, resident council uh, folks on the phone or for housing who may be interested, um, because resident council funds are public housing funds, um, those funds may also be used for the same conditions that I've just described. Next slide. Um, so the CARES Act, I, I mentioned this earlier, the CARES Act actually had um, specific uh, language in the statute uh, appropriating funds under the CARES Act uh, to support or maintain the health and safety of assisted families and support education and child care for impacted families. So as the world sort of began to shut down, um, families were in need of resources to support <clears throat> distance learning, to support telehealth, uh, you know, I items like that. So um, early on, uh, HUD uh, clarified that you know, the CARES Act could be used to pay for uh, much like regular operating funds and regular capital funds, the things that we, you know, Chris and Leandre and I have already described, but can also use to pay for um, devices for students, um, specifically purchasing devices and giving them to students uh, for learning, um, internet service and units uh, for school-aged children, um, you know, other sort of Wi-Fi routers and other uh, mobile hotspots, that they can use um, to, to loan out to families who may not have internet service, and uh, you know, loan devices for residents to access telehealth visits. So you have folks who are um, social distancing, uh, not able to go into the doctor's office. Um, you, you could use uh, PHA-owned devices to uh, support those families' telehealth uh, visits. But uh, you know, just also clarifying that for agencies that have remaining uh, CARES Act funds. Uh, that must be spent by the end of December of this year um, can be used for any of the uh, items described on this slide, but also uh, any of the eligible activities that uh, are CARES Act, or I'm sorry, that are capital fund or operating fund eligible activities as well. Next slide. Um, so with that, um, we will just begin to open up uh, the Q&A session. Thank you all for your participation. Thank you so much, Todd and Chris and Leandria. I really appreciate you being with us today. And so I'll turn it over to, to Christina to lead us through the Q&A. Great, thanks, Janice. Scrolling here, there is uh, a couple of questions that did come into the chat. Continue to, to send them or raise your hand as we get started here. Um, so the first question I have is, do MCW agencies have more leeway with capital funds and broadband? Oh, 
Leandria or I'm Chris sorry, can you can yes. you repeat the question? Yes. Do MTW agencies have more leeway with capital funds and broadband? So uh, with MTWs, um, if they are, there, there is more flexibility. Um, it depends on how they're using their capital funds. Um, some MTW agencies will like, manage their capital fund grants separately um, and not actually uh, included in the MTW block grant. Um, if they do not put it in the block grant, then they still have to uh, follow the uh, restrictions that are under the general capital fund. Um, but if they uh, draw it down um, and put it into their grant, the MTW block grant, then uh, they're guided by the MTW agreement. Great. Thank you. Uh, this is Chris Leandry. I would also say that if, if an MTW agency has a specific question about what they would like to do, um, we can work with the MTW office and give them more specific guidance. Right, yeah, these are kind of individualized. Okay, I see, um, I do see a hand raise. I'm gonna try to unmute uh, Jacqueline Hicks. Jacqueline, you're unmuted now. Do you have a question? Oh, no, I don't. Okay. Okay, I guess we'll see a second hand raise. We're gonna to try to unmute Carlos. Carlos, did you have a question? Well, um, there is another question in the chat box that we'll move to. Um, Carlos, let us know if um, you do have a question, if you're unable, you might be muted on your own line separately. So I think you were unmuted. Did you have a question, Carlos? I think that might have been a mistake. Um, the next question I have in the chat box is, are there are these are these funds available for recently converted RAD projects? We're trying to find a way to fund broadband for our RAD property. Um, so, uh, so, so these these are uh, public housing funds, um, and uh, can only be used to support uh, public housing buildings, right? So, uh, you can't use these funds to um, pay for the expenses uh, of um, you know of recently converted rad. Great, thanks. Next question I have is, uh, can you repeat what was said about residents own equipment? Yeah, so that was in re reference to um, the maintenance, right? So I went through a list of um, maintenance uh, expenses that could be paid out of the offering fund. And I wanted to be clear that that was only, that, that the maintenance for that type of equipment was only for PHA owned equipment. Um, uh, not for uh, resident-owned equipment. So, for example, if, if a housing authority um, has a, com a computer center, a neighborhood network center, and they need to perform maintenance uh, or replacement of, uh, of, of a unit, um, 
uh, I'm sorry, of, of, a, of a computer, they can do that with operating funds. But if a resident, a resident has a resident-owned laptop, um, the Housing Authority cannot use operating funds to uh, replace or perform maintenance for that item. Great, thank you. Next question I have in the chat box is, how do we help Section 8 families? Um, that, 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 that's a great question. Um, I, I think uh, we can certainly uh, take that back um, and uh, raise it to our um, colleagues on the, the HCD and the uh, project-based rental assistance Section 8 side, um, but uh, you know, just as I clarify with Rad, um, these funds, you know, these public housing funds, offering funds, and capital funds uh, cannot be used to support um, Section 8 families. Hi, it's Tara. I can add a little bit to that. Um, there is some flexibility with the CARES Act funds, uh, but the voucher program had a different way of announcing eligible uses. There's a uh, sheet that you can link to, it's like a Word document you can link to from the uh, HCD website. And the fastest way to get there is just to Google HUD PIH HCD, uh, and that's the main Housing Choice Voucher website. I can post Thank it in you. the chat too. Great, thanks, Tara. You're doing that. Then the next question I have in the box is could could the resident council funds be used over the course of several years to build out connectivity in a small building operated by a small PHA? Um whoever it, it is that um asked that question, um can you email me? Uh, it's, my email address is Todd. C is in cat. Dot Thomas at HUD. Gov. Uh, I'd like to, you know, get get a little more information about the request. Um, you know, without instead of answering here, because I think there, um, it, it, it's it's probably got a lot of nuance, and I'd I'd like to talk through it a little bit prior to answering. Great. One strategy to bring affordable internet is to negotiate low cost internet from an ISP and then decide to pay for it either in full or partially. What portion of this program could be used to pay for those services to residents in the future? Can you repeat the question? One strategy to bring affordable internet is to negotiate low cost internet from an ISP and then decide to pay for it either in full or partially. What portion of this program could be used to pay for those services to, to residents into the future? So in other words, um, let's say there's a housing authority that decides to do a bulk purchase of internet service for, let's just say, two years. Um, I guess the question is, could either of these funds be used to pay for some or all of that bulk purchase? Um, so, clar clarify the internet service can be paid out of uh, the operating fund, right? Um, uh, I think we would need to consult with um, our accounting folks in terms of how far in advance you could pay for something um, right now, I think that that's a question that I, I would need to sort of take back and, and, and consider a little a little more without uh, answering now. I mean, I, like I said, want, want to be clear that certainly a housing authority 
can, can pay for operating or can pay for uh, internet service with that. Um, but I, I'd want to consider how far in advance uh, that, that that purchase can, can be made. But it, it's a really good question and we, we can, can confirm and get back with, with this group with a, a fuller answer. Next question I have here is just to clarify, isn't an eligible expense to pay internet service for individual units? Is there a cap amount per unit and or how long can operating funds be used to pay for internet services? Um, yeah, so one, this is a, a permanent um, clarification that HUD has made with respect to the operating fund, not, not just related to the CARES Act, that housing authorities can use uh, regular operating funds to pay for uh, individual internet service at a tenant's unit. Um, and that is not something that's limited to the, the time period for the CARES Act, um, and uh, the service does not need to be purchased in bulk for the entire property. It, it, it can be used to pay for um, you know, individual internet service at a, a specific unit, uh, or could be used to pay for um, you know, internet service for an entire property. Great. Next question I have here is: If a PA chooses to use the 1408 funds to pay for broadband activities. And after drawing those funds becomes an MTW and their MTW plan included broadband activities, does the agency have to pay back the 1408 funds used prior to becoming an MTW agency? Leandria or Chris, I think this is for you. Can you repeat that? Yep. I, I'm looking in the chat. I don't see it. Yeah, this one just came to me. Oh, um, okay. Yep. Yeah. I'll read it again and I'll, I'll try to uh, copy and paste and send to you as well. If a PHA chooses to use the 1408 funds to pay for broadband activities and after drawing those funds becomes an MTW agency and their MTW plan included broadband activities, does the agency have to pay back the 1408 funds used prior to becoming an MTW? It probably doesn't have to pay back the funds. It probably would um, open grants that are expended, grants that are expended prior to converting to MPW um, would probably just exist in their current state. We wouldn't do like any kind of a, like a disbursement change or something like that based on conversion after to MPW. So if, if a housing authority is not MPW, then they are correct to follow the applicable capital and operating guidelines and then when they convert to MTW, um, they will follow their MTW plan. Um, we, we wouldn't we wouldn't go like try to retroactively take that 1408 funds back. Right. Generally, uh, that's only an issue with RAD conversions because the funding is meant for public housing. And uh, once they convert through RAD, it's no longer public housing. But I'm um, just changing the status of the agency from MTW to non-MTW usually won't affect that. Okay, thanks. The next question I have here is, can you clarify use of staff salaries? Staff salaries can only be used during the implementation period, correct? Where do PHAs pay for staff, sal staff salaries beyond the implementation phase? So for uh, capital funds, 
Um, under that budget line item 1408, staff salaries can only be used for the implementation period. Um, that would be a very brief period, um, usually not to exceed six months, um, sometimes it's shorter, that uh, is identified in a uh, management improvements plan. Um, however, uh, ongoing staff salaries are eligible through the operating fund, and uh, you PHAs are always allowed to use a portion of their capital funds uh, for operating fund costs. So uh, if a PHA is using capital funds uh, for operating costs, then they can pay for it as an ongoing expense. However, um, if they're using it under that one budget line item, uh, 1408 for management improvements, it's only for the establishment. So only uh, the salaries that support the establishment, the initial operation of the center. The next question I have here is, does HUD have a listing of housing authorities and their contact information that have been successful in bringing broadband access to their residents? It'd be great to be able to consult with some peer PHAs. I think I can take that one. Hi, hi. yes, if you, um, I'll put my email in the chat. If you want to reach out to me, um, you can, and I can give you contact information for PHAs could potentially be in your area. These are PHAs that are participating in the Connect Home USA initiative. Thank you. Next question I have here is slide 15 states that broadband is not a part of utility allowance. In the event that power for a Wi-Fi component on a multi-unit building needs to be pulled from an individual resident meter, are we allowed to reimburse the resident for the cost of the power used for the Wi-Fi equipment? So the, 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 the question is, are you allowed to reimburse the, the family for the electricity uh, to support the, 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 the cost of the computer and, and broadband equipment? Is that, is that the question? I think so, yes, because it says it power. So, yeah, yeah I believe okay. electricity. Yeah, so, so, uh, so the way that in, in the public housing program, utilities are provided sort of one, one or, or two ways, right? Um, either the electricity is paid by the housing authority for a particular unit, um, at, at which point then the housing authority is, you know, whatever the sort of electricity usage is by that household is rolled into the housing authority's electricity bill um, and, uh, and, and is paid by the housing authority. If uh, the family is responsible for paying for um, uh, electricity, um, you know, that electricity usage is, um, in theory, covered by the utility allowance. Um, and uh, to, to the extent that, um, you know, uh, that the family uses more electricity than the utility allowance provides for uh, as a, you know, result of their usage of that, the family would be responsible for paying for the excess utility usage um, you know, the, the housing authorities have a requirement to review their utility allowances uh, annually, um, and then in certain cases, if there are significant changes midstream to the rates, housing authorities have to look at that more, more frequently annually. But, um, you know, uh, housing authorities should set uh, uh, utility allowances based on sort of reasonable uh, consumption levels um, uh, for families, and, and uh, so just sort of, I guess, pointing out then that, that the utility allowance may or may not um, uh, factor in utility usage, which would include um, uh, the use of uh, computers and things like that. Great. Next 
question I have here. In the event that broadband services are set up initially with one provider and that provider services turn out to be inadequate to support the PHA, would funds be available to set up under a different service provider or would that have to be absorbed by the PHA? In other words, in this case, there may be initial setup costs with one provider and other costs with the new provider as technology changes. So I, I think I think I understand understand the question to be, um, you know, as, as a, a housing authority is, is setting up service with uh, firm A with respect to broadband at, at their property, um, and then uh, soon thereafter um, decides that that the service the the bandwidth whatever may, may not be sufficient to cover the needs of the property, and decides then to set up service with another company uh which which then has a, a different uh sort of setup fee or you know, is charged to set up service there and the question is is, is is are there funds that can be used to you know additional funds to support that for for housing authorities um if that's the question i just want to you know, sort of clarify again housing authorities can use uh, you know, use operating funds to pay for broadband service, which which uh, includes the the cost of the you know broadband service each month, but could also include um, uh, the one-time sort of connection fees that they may have to pay to to, to set that up. But um, as I noted before, there's there's no additional operating subsidy provided to support this. This is just something that would be considered a sort of normal operating cost of the housing authority. Um, and, and, you know, but the housing authority wouldn't get a bump up in operating subsidy because they chose to provide uh, broadband, uh, nor whether they have broadband and choose to change service in the, in the middle of the year. Great, thank you. Next question I have here is, can voucher tenants use with capital funds? Will the president's infrastructure proposal cover internet nationwide? Christina, you broke up a little bit at the beginning of the question. Can you repeat it? Yep, thank you. Can voucher tenants use public housing com uh, computer labs developed with capital funds? And will the president's infrastructure proposal cover internet nationwide? Um, so for the first part of the question, um, no, uh, the lab can only be for public housing residents. Um, if voucher residents are using it, then it has to be prorated uh, with the voucher program. And then, with, with, with respect to um, the second question, I, you know, I don't, I don't think we're uh, uh, able to comment on administration proposal. Um, you know, uh, that's probably something better, better suited um, uh, for somebody to direct to, uh, you know, elected officials or, or sort of HUD officials. I can say that the proposal contemplates a hundred billion for broadband networks, but that that's that's all we can really say. Thanks. So our next question is our PHA is considering partnering with a community based organization that has an existing project that aspires to bring broadband acts to our low income neighborhood that borders one of our family developments. Are you aware of any PHAs that have partnered with a CBO to procure an ISP? I'm not aware of that arrangement. I don't know if others are. Move to the next question. 
15 minutes left here. Where on the FTS do I report the internet costs paid by operations? Um, that, that, is, that is a really good question. Um, I, I would need to uh, circle back with our uh, FAST team in the REACT uh, to get you a specific answer uh, to, to that. I'm, I'm not an accountant and um, I, I, wouldn't, I, I don't have that, that specific um, FDS line item on hand, but, but certainly we can, um, we can get back to you all on. Thank you. Only 10% of CFP can be used for wiring and equipment for Wi-Fi broadband, correct? I have a large building in 27,393, which is 10% about one quarter of the cost. So I just want to make sure I understood correctly. So the so I think the question yeah, is. It, yep. it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like the question is, can the housing authority only use 10% of its capital fund for the wiring? So the 10% that we talked about was under the management improvement budget line item. So if an activity falls under management improvements, then it's the housing authority is limited to 10% of each grant under capital fund formula for management improvements. If a housing authority, if there are other costs that are operating costs and the housing authority uses 1406 uh, operations under their cap fund to pay for operating costs, then um, that would go up to, uh, depends on the year and depends on the size of the housing authority, but um, typically, Historically, it's been 20%, and then under recent appropriations language, that has been increased to 25%. And for small non-troubled housing authorities with no significant capital needs, with field office approval, they can use 100%. Um, and additionally, the um, if it's not a management improvement, if it's a if it's a modernization, uh, a physical upgrade under modernization under 1480 then the, there, there may be items that are not management improvements that the housing authority would do under BLI 1480. So it's not that we're limiting a housing authority to 10% for broadband, but if a housing authority has specific items that they think they want to do, um, they should check with their field office and with our office and we can take a look and make sure that those are eligible and make sure they're correctly captured under the right budget line item. Great. If internet is not to be used for entertainment, how do we monitor? So uh, I want to be uh, cl clarify that what, what we said was that the funds could not be used to pay for cable television could not be used to pay for phone service and can't be used to pay for um, streaming services like Netflix or Disney Plus or things like that. Um, what, we, what I did not say is that uh, housing authorities have any obligation to monitor the behavior um, of, of the residents who utilize internet service. So um, families can use the internet service provided by the housing authority or you know, job training, job searches, educational resources, and, and of course can use it for sort of entertainment purposes as well. Um, but uh, housing authorities, you know, would would be paying for specifically for the internet service, but not for um, any of the associated uh, um, uh, entertainment type resources like like the things I just named out. Um, just looked at the time. Dina, I, we do have uh, several more questions in the chat box. Um, so I just wanted to kind of check in on whether we want, um, how we want to handle that. 
should do you want to keep going for another minute or two or would you rather have us wrap up uh, i'll ask my presenters if they have time um to 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 stay on for a few more minutes if not then we can take the questions and circle back with, with the people who asked them. So panelists, uh, do you have a few more minutes? Um, I, I can stay around for a couple more minutes. This is Todd. I can stay for a few more minutes. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Okay, so let's keep going for a few more minutes. Okay. Can we pay for internet service via hotspots with operating funds for public housing residents that live at a tax credit property where not all residents are public housing residents? Uh, you know, so so so, uh, so I, I, when it comes to uh, a mixed finance property, um, I think I think I'd want to. Take, take a little closer look at the facts. I think, you know, again, e email me at you know, todd.c.thomas at hud.gov, um, and I can certainly take take a closer look at the specific facts of, of, of the case um, there and provide, a, 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 I think, a cleaner answer. Okay. If you can use operating funds to pay for internet in individual units, don't you have to provide that same service to all units? So, uh, right. So, so if if, uh, if a housing authority decides that they're going to provide internet service in a hundred unit building, and they decide to provide it for for one family, they would need to provide it for all families. Um, uh, you know, if a, if a family sort of chooses not to um, you know, use the internet, uh, you know, anything like that, but I, I get the point. We, the point we're trying to make here is that it isn't um, it, it isn't only for the housing authority business operations, but it's also for the individual units themselves. So I think that's the try. That's the kind. Of, but but you know, the, the question is is absolutely correct. You you can't sort of pick and choose. Uh, which residents you provide uh, internet for, you know, once you've provided it at a particular property, uh, or I'm sorry, a particular unit within a property, you need to provide it to all the families in that property. Right. Next question I have here is, Wi-Fi APs are usually powered from a central source. Actually, it looks like the rest of the question was cut off. Um, so we may return to that one. Um, do we need annual plan approval to pay for resident internet? No, this is, um, you know, again, this is an eligible operating uh, fund expense. Um, and so there would be no need to sort of uh, seek out or uh, get specific annual plan approval to use the funds for this purpose. Are there any procurement regulations policy applicable when entering into an agreement with an ISP or broadband provider? There's, I can answer a little bit of that question. So if you're contemplating um, utilizing your rooftop space, say, um, you do need to get approval from your field office. Um, but in terms of other procurement, I, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know if others do. It sounds like that's something that we should um, do some more research on and get back to whoever asked that question.
Okay, great. Um, so that is all that we have in the the chat box. And given that we're the five minutes over, um, I think we've covered a lot. And I know we do have a few that we're going to follow up on. So we'll be making note of that. Well, thanks everybody for participating today, um, the audience and our wonderful panelists. And thank you to Christina and to Kayla with Enterprise for helping us uh, organize this webinar and, and deliver it. So hope everyone has a great afternoon and we'll be in touch. Thank you so much.